Hello and welcome to part 2E of my Blender to Unity Tower Defense game walkthrough stroke tutorial. Uh, in this part we will be creating this texture here for the machine gun turret that we created earlier on. Again I've spent a lot of time playing around with this trying to get something that I like the look of. I'm liking it, I think it needs more decals but I'm going to leave it up to you to decide how you want to kind of you know make it make make it your own and you know, add your own personalization to it I'm actually quite happy with the way it looks in general I feel like it needs something like maybe flames down the side or something but I've gone for a really standard look so that it's sort of generic and you know I guess the military don't have uh, fancy graffiti or decals down the side so I thought I'd just go with something standard so let's crack on with this now the first thing I realized when I was doing the uh, um, a test earlier on was that I hadn't unwrapped it properly and I'd overlapped some of the UV texture so if we just quickly pop back into um, our models all dot blend let's just find machine gun uh, do shift H and if I just tab in and select all you'll and just do shift space over here you'll see what I'm talking about the uh, circle here which is the ones that contains the front of the barrels it's overlapping some of the other textures. Very poor on my part. Apologies if you did that. Maybe you saw it and was screaming at me saying, Rich, stop. So I'll just grab that and stick it over there. Um, and that's fine. And now we can export that now. Let's just save this. Um, actually, no, let's, let's tab out Alt-H and now we'll save it. Okay, and then we can file. Uh, make sure Machine Gun is selected. And now File, Export. FPX usual deal. We are not in the right place. So we want documents, tower defense, models, machine gun, and it's machine gun dot FPX, isn't it? Machine underscore gun. Dot FBX. Okay, make sure it's we have selected objects selected and click export. Okay, now we've got a, a proper uh, um, FBX where the uh, it's unwrapped and everything's got its own area texture area. So let's go to Substance Painter and start again. I've saved this one out, but I'll just I'll just save it in a separate folder. This is an actually interesting exercise in using textures that you wouldn't normally expect to use. I've been kind of using the uh, metal ones right now, and for this one I didn't. So let me just show you what I did. So let's just go to File New. Uh, we'll select our template. We'll go over to Documents and uh, what was it Tower Defense. Models, machine gun. I've got it there twice. That's the old one, so I'm going to delete this. 15th of the third. Yep. Yeah, let's let's see. Well, let's not delete it. Let's just rename it to dot dot wrong or something. And yep. Yeah, and then we'll just select this one. Machine gun dot fbx. Open. Okay. Uh, that's all we need. I'll just tab back into uh, uh, main screen view, and we will begin the usual yawning process of selecting a 1024 by 1024 image I will go for 2 by 2 uh, subsampling again like, like usual you should probably go for 4 by 4 or if you're feeling brave 8 by 8 it just smooths out all the lines makes sure everything you know it's got the really decent maps to work with when it's doing its calculations so but 2 by 2 is quick and I'm just trying to get through this presentation for you guys so what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two parts we're going to have the main unit and these barrels here and I can't you can't see them at the minute but at the back you may recall we had kind of two I guess I'm calling them vents but I don't really know what they kind of just add sort of realism to the to, to the look of the, the of the barrel perhaps it's going all the way through through the uh, through the main unit there so we'll we'll we'll, we'll texture that, that those pieces separately to the main unit so let's start with the main unit what we'll do is we'll add a folder let's delete this layer here for now we'll just call this main unit if there is a right name for this, please do let me know because I'd love <laughs> I'd love to know what it is. I'm calling it main unit, and what I actually went for was artificial leather. I went for it because it was black, and I was just playing around with it. If we just drag that in, although it's um, although it's leather, it actually looks rather good. I, I like the look of that. It, it to me, I think in this context, it doesn't look like leather at all. Uh, what I will also do if I just click on here, and if you just go down here, if you slide down somewhere, there it is under the base color. You can change it. So let's just click dynamic. We'll get the the greenish and go over there. Start to darken it up. Obviously, I know you're thinking, well, hang on, the barrels are black or green as well. That's fine. Let's sort that out in a few seconds' time. How about something like that? I think that's a very good start. We can always darken it later on. Let's isolate it out so it's just affecting this main section. And of course, we do that by adding the all important black mask. I don't know if you remember, but the barrel here at the front and the 
I really don't know what to call those things at the back are uh, separate meshes so let's just if we just go to the main unit here uh, click on UV polygon fill that's it and then we'll select mesh fill and just select that middle piece be kind there we go and it's just selected the middle bit there okay let's uh, um, do the usual piece where we add some um, dirt to it and what I think I did for this was <laughs> this I was just again I was playing around and I went for under materials I went for leather bag there it is and if I just drag that in drag it on top of you I actually rather like the look of that um, as as a, a background image and so what I did was I added a black mask uh, quickly over to the regular screen so hang on the black mask here and we'll add ourselves a generator rather than a smart mask and we'll do MG dirt there I like something about that I just really rather like the look of it I like the way it's um it blends together nicely and I think what I might have done as well if I'm not mistaken under one of these height position you can just drag that you can see that you can drag it in or out to give it a bit of a indentation so let's do that sometimes it's hard to see but that looks a little too strong believe it or not I think oh, what I might want to do as well is just tick try plane art and up the UV scale. That's not making a lot of difference, is it? Let's put it back to three then. Okay. Um, let's go with that. So it is giving something in the way of. Uh, no, I, I think that's a bit too strong. Let's try 0.52. Just enough to give it a bit of indentation. There we go. And of course, it goes without saying that I'll be adding the um, smart mask concrete edges too. Just drag that in. Okay, and then set that mask to a linear dodge. That'll give us that effect there. Now I think that's a really, really good start for that. Something about that look, I think, instantly grabs me. It's possibly a little <laughs> uh, not metallic enough. Uh, I don't think we can change that. Oh, maybe we can. That's the wrong one. So it's really the the roughness we want to change, isn't it? I'm not going to play with that now, but I can. Uh, I can potentially play with that roughness. Let's just make it a little bit more shiny. There we go. Okay, so that's a good start. Let's um, let's work on these uh, barrels, front and back. So we can just close that one down, and we will create a new one, a new folder, which never goes in the right place. Drag it to the top, and we'll just call this barrels. And for the life of me, I think I might have gone, I might have gone for um, artificial leather again. Let's just pull that in. Yeah, why not? Why not? If it works for the other one, it works for this one. Obviously, we need to isolate it to just those front and back pieces. So let's do that. Um, quickly adding a black mask, clicking on polygon fill, click on mesh fill, and then boom and boom. Okay, we're really rattling through this now, aren't we? We're getting pretty good at this. Um, I cannot remember what. Um, dirt I use for this, but I'm pretty sure I used rust. Um, it may have been rust fine. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I think it was, you know. Obviously, again, we need to add a black mask. And then, I can't remember if I used a generator. Let's just quickly add a generator and add MG dirt. Yeah, I think that's what I did. It's a bit, a bit red, isn't it? Um, probably too red let's see if we can darken that color down a touch just to make it a little less ridiculous looking actually one more try it's just lightening it up and then um, are we on base color yes just maybe changing the opacity changing that maybe to Lydia Dodge yeah yeah why not why not again I, I'd like to maybe make this a height map so let's quickly see if we can do that if we go into technical parameters probably just add a bit of bit of naughtiness so you can go mad but obviously we're going to go for just really subtle this i hope you realize that if we were doing 2048 by 2048 this image would look that much sharper but i don't think we need to go down there bearing in mind that this thing's going to be what that far away that further than that 
you know we're hardly going to see these things all right so let's uh, stick the barrels in the front you may recall I keep saying this and you may recall uh, if you remember that uh, these actual textures here are uh, these meshes here are actually in the same texture space so if I apply anything to this one it applies it to that you can't really notice though can you that it's um, they're exactly the same if if they did look exactly identical in terms of the sort of where the dirt was positioned what you could potentially do is just rotate one of them but I don't think we need to okay we're doing well let me add the indentation at the front so let's get our barrels which we have here I'll just click on that and click on add layer and let's do a few things let's click on brushes and do default hard I'll unselect metal rough and normal we just want height and color let's put that as an indent and maybe just play around with purling noise or something as a like so I'm not happy with that really a couple of things let's get the hardness up to one shrink it down a bit let's try that Okay, I know it looks terrible at them. No, it's too big. Let's go down the gimp. How's that? Yeah, that's a bit better. And we will obviously, I say obviously, let's call that barrel tips or something. We'll obviously, put that as linear dodge or something. Yeah, sometimes multiply. Yeah, I'm going with multiply on this occasion. It's overdone it, but that's fine because we wanted it to be quite dark. And let's just start to lighten that thing up until it looks like a gap, something like that. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, let's just save this now. Let's make sure we're in the uh, right location. So let's go to uh, documents, tower defense models, machine gun, and we'll call it. Um, am I going to override the one I've already created? Let's not. I'll call it Machine Gun Two. Spp. You won't need to do that, obviously, because you'll be running it for the first time. Right. Let's start to add some decals to it. Some interest to make it a little, little, little bit more punchy. Uh, what I did was I added some uh, vertical lines down the side and put some dirt on them. So let's do that now. Main unit. If we click on, so we click on leather bag and click on add layer. We will change the alpha to the line it's currently um, horizontal so let's set that to 90 degrees I think what I want to do is get rid of that and set you to a certain color something along the lines of orange you can, you can play around with this too far let's just do dynamic and then just pick I don't know, something like that <laughs> Bit of a brown. There we go. Something like that. All right, and we'll just slide that up. Make sure that the height is up. We're gonna go upwards. Uh, just make sure mirror is on, and then kind of find the middle. Shift Control and right click, and we haven't put the spacing anywhere near enough. So let's put it up to here. I think something like 26 rings a bell, just from memory from the previous time let's have a quick play huh. oh there we go I've got that one right haven't I that's good now I think something I've probably learned that you know this is why these are tutorials <laughs> these are walkthroughs not tutorials is that looks too clean compared to the rest of it and what I should have done was the following all I needed to do now was change my alpha back to a, a dirt brush let's pick dirt 3 um, don't touch the height but change the color to a dark whatever and then again make sure mirror mode is still on just start dirtying this up I think that's probably too strong so slide up pop the flow jitter down just pop the flow jitter down to the flow down to there probably too strong again maybe yeah I think so so let's just keep going until we find something that we there yeah, that's better I'm just kind of filling that gap in there. Can you see? And now it's a bit dirty and it doesn't look so out of place with that bright colour. Good, good, good. We're doing well, guys. I'm absolutely flying through this now. I think this is probably the uh, getting really getting the hang of this. Okay, let's 
um, get rid of the mirror modifier. And what I did at the back was I did these grills at the back. So let's quickly get let's set a new to the barrels. Let's add a new layer and we'll call this back grill. I'm desperately trying to make, you know to put as many layers as I can for each piece. And we'll click on default hard just to clean out all the settings. This, this is why I do this by the way. I click default hard so that all of the jitters um, are set back to zero and it resets all the angles and stuff and the spacing. Excuse me, to something sensible. Um, we want to only have the normal and we will remove the alpha. And if we click on our normal, I need to find it. It was it was called grid something, I think. Too many guys. I think oh, was it was vent. It was vent, I think. And then if we there's different there's different vents, it's slightly confusing. I can't see it. So it's, no, it's not vent O one. Let's quickly spin down. Sorry. It was definitely one of the circular events. It, well, I'm sure it was on Vent 13. Did I write it down? No. Um, I'm going to go with Vent 01, and then you guys can pick a pick a different vent, and then we'll just select it to that maybe. Yeah, why not? Why not? And then we'll just stamp that in. Or maybe I even like that more than the first one. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Why not? Okay, uh, the final thing I did, I think, was just add some uh, decals to the top just to make it slightly interesting. So if we just uh, pick another, go, if we go back to the main unit, go back to the, what was this layer here? Let's make sure we name that. That is the side panels, right? Side indents. We call them indents, but they're out dents, aren't they? But it doesn't matter. Side indents. Okay, so let's add something above it. We'll call this top indents <laughs> and I didn't like to put a colour on this but maybe I should um, I'm not going to I'll leave it up to you if you want to okay let's again click on the default hard you see and that sets everything up for us we just want it to affect the height channel and we will select I'm just going to try a couple of things just to mess around let's bring this bad boy up here I think I might have used this a few times now does that look better? Do you know what? I'm, I'm liking it more than the other one. I wonder if I put it to the front. There. And then, yeah, I like that. And then what I will do is I will add some thin lines. Sliding that down. Again, just positioning it. This this for me is where some sense painter wins out. You can just zoom in and zoom out, and not have to worry that the um, the stamp, the alpha stamp I'm using, is going to change size. So I'm going to click that, and I'll just drag that down. I'm betting I'm going to do that just one more time, just a little bit closer to this. Yeah, sorry guys, I think I've done that a whole heap better. If we just turn the mirror off, I think that looks just that much better. And I'll see what I'll do, I'll just throw in a vertical line in the middle. Uh, uh, here, 90. The best way, if it doesn't, f if, if I, to make it longer, I'd have to do that. I think what I can do is if I go to the Substance Painter Alpha, this fella, Squeeze it right down to next to nothing. It'll be very thin, but I can make it larger. Oh, I'm being a fool. I'm being a fool because I can just drag the thing down. Sorry, sorry, guys. I'm being a fool. I can use the. Um, I'll just use line thin. Just slide it into the the size that I want. There. Let's just see, I might even go out dent on this. Yeah, indent, excuse me. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. Tab in, should we? Should we just go full screen on this? Yeah, I think that might even be the right thing to do.
Guys, that's a winner for me. I think I think this is my best creation so far. Possibly should have put some colours on those just to make it a bit more interesting. I don't know. I think that's that looks very cool. I like the grills at the back. That's going to impress people. When there's going to be some flames or something coming out of here, just to you know some um, what's that called? Flash fire, is it? You know the stuff I mean when you get the, the all the the flame coming out, all the, the sort of the shock light that comes out when it's blistering all its bullets out we're going to put that into into unity as a particle effect it's going to look great i'm really pleased with how that's gone better than the uh, better than the previous one i think i hope you like that too so we'll call that done again you know, please feel free to add more decals do some stuff play around maybe stick a uh, stick your own logo on it i'd love to see some of your creations uh, it doesn't you can go ahead and and go to town because the logic that I'm going to be using when we go to Unity isn't going to be um, specific to any mesh size or anything like that, so you can, you don't have to worry about that. If you want to uh, do it in your own way, please go ahead. Try and keep it roughly in this sort of shape so that we're um, we're not, um, uh, you know, getting too far apart from what we're trying to achieve. But you should be able to keep it pretty, pretty diverse if you want to. So thank you very much for listening. Again, thank you everyone for liking and subscribing to these uh, YouTube videos. It means a lot to me. Please feel free to comment. Uh, or ask any questions and I will do my utmost to get back to you as soon as possible. I look forward to seeing you next time what is it in 2F where we will finish our last turret which is the uh, laser turret. I think I'm going to have a little play with that and try and go for something a little bit more sci-fi rather than uh, um, kind of this, this grungy military look. I think I'll go for something a little bit more uh, futuristic. So stay tuned. I hope you look forward to that one and see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.